Uh, <coughs> pardon me. So last time uh, we had started with one of the most uh, crucial or important part on cybersecurity in terms of understanding the identity access management uh, tools where we normally give authorization and authentication to all participants. So here we are talking about uh, trying to set up the complete office hierarchy in terms of understanding how the office works uh, in terms of various, uh, various uh, hierarchy, authorization, authentication, who got what all, you know, uh, privileges, what all privileges are uh, accessed for far and few and so on and so forth. So whenever you join a group and organizations, there are some restrictions, there are some freebies and there are some, you know, a disciplined way of approach, right? And this is a normal social, you know, uh, this uh, social rules we normally follow on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's how here also in terms of IT access uh, management, in terms of IT resource consumption, in terms of IT network access, we have certain restrictions. We have certain, uh, what you can say, access rights to be given as far as your use and all those things. This is like an employee joining today. Um, it, can he or she sh or should he or she uh, get the account records for uh, you know couple of uh, months couple of weeks what do you think is it the right thing to do hello can you hear me hello am i audible Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so I believe you got an idea of this access management thing, right? This is a thing which we've, uh, you know, seen earlier. Let me start with a new presentation where we'll try to understand in depth and learn some good tools on that. Okay. So let me start with idea and I am tools. As we can see in our, you know, uh, on our screen, uh, there are some, uh, you know. Uh, requester there are some uh, you know resources who want to access certain things may be it an application be it a distribution list be it a database be it certain sort of a hardware or a server now when it comes to any organizations they have certain restrictions like a person's working in accounts shouldn't have access to database a person working as a developer shouldn't have access to a database a person working as a you know uh, let's say CFO might need to basically uh, have access to all these uh, uh, um, all these uh, you know data points required for a similar department. So we have a kind of compartmentalization within our organization, and we normally give access to subsequent persons in terms of having their you know access rights set up, and we set normally set up a hierarchy. In the terms, we might have a CMD. CEO, CTOs, then we might have, you know, um, uh, top uh, department heads like account department head, uh, development department head, sales department head, and so on and so forth. Then we might have an executives like a sales executive or an accounts executive or a, you know, a software developer, software tester, and even cybersecurity expert like us as well. So all these things make an organization in terms of a perfect hierarchy. Why do you call it hierarchy? Because it's a kind of tree-like structure where, where you have different levels. An executive shouldn't get the you know uh, details of a CEO, CFO salaries, and so on and so forth. So we have certain restrictions, certain uh, what you can say, the levels of hierarchies within any organizations. Are you with me? Could you understand this simple thing? Everybody does understand hierarchy and how an organizations implement hierarchy within themselves. Yes. And this is a need of a today's day to day modern work, be it any department, be it we are talking about a school. So in the school, we have a hierarchy like we have a headmaster leading the complete workforce at a school. We have some, you know, department heads like a chemistry department head, like maths department head and so on and so forth. And then we have certain professors, associate professors, guest professors, then students PTAs, 
students and so on and so forth so here we have a good number of hierarchy set up in any given organizations and these hierarchy normally there to denote in terms of escalation in terms of the access right of certain information here and there so if you have any problem you might go to his or her superior and that's how the overall working works in a given corporate culture within north america as well as canada so here a requester can be anybody a new cfo joining the organization or a new head headmistress starting a school a college or what not so here a requested might feel like he or she might get the access to everything on in the, within the organizations but that's hardly the case even for as a cyber security expert we could not be able to see the accounts data and that's a normal scenario because account data or we might have a hierarchy of accounts data like some might see his or her own pay slip his or her own you know, you know what you can say basic salary the additions the subtractions and all those things but he might not see the um, uh, salary of his boss his increment his uh, you know overall whatever payouts are been giving to him and the relevant calculation so that's how everything works in a given organization so we might be looking for a categorization of different application that could be used like sap within sap sap as a application called enterprise resource planning erp like that we might have 10 different application in a given organization so all these applications have a restricted access to given executive to given employee within an organization even ceo cto might not have a access rights to few applications and this is a normal scenario because they don't need to be they don't have time and they don't want it or uh, it's not purview of their job to access those application to do any amends or something like that or they might have a read access so that even by mistake they might not move the data they might not update that thing and so on so forth so here we are looking for an identity access management solution which can give the authorization and authentications to each individual within an organization for the entities like application, for the entities like database, for the entities like hardware, like printer, router, uh, the you know access card system and so on and so forth and then various servers as well. A normal server is managed by the server administrator. It can be a server of a web application, it can be a server of a banking application if you're working in a banking industry and so on and so forth. So even that server, that server have a very restricted access. Like we talked about the communication encryption and decryption to safeguard our communication. Now here we are talking about the actual end entity like the server where the request is getting placed on. So any person who wants to access certain thing will go through this access uh, or identity and access management solution. So if somebody asked uh, ask you what is IAM solution, this is an identity access management solution we are talking about. It is normally referred as an IDIM or IAM or ID. Depending upon the interview and the culture the company have been adopted, we normally have this acronym used for identity access management solution and this is how we need to uh, give the answer to the interviewer now this is a quite common question what do you mean by identity access management solutions and why do we need it can anybody answer this question for me why do you need identity access management solutions yeah um so my own understanding uh uh identity as a uh, access management solution is all about mm -hmm. authentication and authorization uh -huh. and uh, in every organization uh, administrator has a full access mm -hmm. why the, uh, the user which is uh, the employee as in the junior one uh, has a less privilege maybe they could have a read not mm -hmm. to read mm -hmm. all right but they don't have right to to do anything as in access to the data or whatever so they have a uh, less privileged access why the administrator have full access perfect perfect sir 
uh, I believe you explained very correctly in terms of technical term, which even I have not expressed. That's very right. Normally, for a given entity, you might have a read access, write access, modify access, and delete access. This is normally uh, the way we used to, you know, specify identity management solution uh, in a uh, you know, couple of decades before. But yes, that uh, answer still stands correct. Thank you, Precious sir. It's really great explanation. Normally, we refer these things to any database object. But this is true for every uh, uh, you know, entity uh, for a given employee, like the account records or like the access to a particular uh, you know, a server, access to a particular department, and even access to a particular printer. And these are all normally set up by a identity and access management solution. Are we clear about that? Any, any confusion as of now? I believe no. Let me go ahead. Let's try to understand how many, uh, you know, um, let's uh, revise this thing. ID and IAM, IAM crucial part of cybersecurity because as we know, we are the people who is going to secure the organization, secure the whole thing. So anything, be it a physical security or logical security. Security Normally, ID and IAM comprises of mostly uh, logical security, but in most of the scenario, like the access management solution in terms of physical access to the office uh, infrastructure, like the access card, you normally have a company given access card, you put it to the, uh, you know, card reader of the door and the door opens for you. There's no security normally as far as physical security goes. But yes, there are various cameras, at least two. One is for capturing the photo of an individual who is entering the building and one for continuous recording. So if somebody tries to fiddle around even with the cameras or the, you know, access uh, machines, uh, he or she might get recorded and then even uh, in a uh, good number of companies, if such a disturbance uh, have tried, the automatic video and photo goes to the um, nearest possible, uh, you know, uh, guards office and they might come running. Hey, what are you trying to do here? Kind of scenario. So here we have a response system for a given, even card access management system. And this is just you are entering to the office. And this is how every company every organizations in today's modern world like to keep their infrastructure in terms of the building secure even in companies mostly whenever you try to park your car there are clear guidelines this is for visitor this is for one hour car park this is for three hour car park specifically in crowded area like all metro cities be it in new york chicago and all where parking is really difficult or parking space is really scarce to come back and that's how we use this ID and I am, you know, solution security to address all such problems. And that's why it's a purview of cybersecurity executives to have all these things set up and make sure they are run properly as per the business needs, as per the business requirement. So ID and I am is an integral part of cybersecurity domain. So securing the identity management in terms of if Ravindra joins an organization called Enterprise Rental Car, so what are his, uh, you know, what is his department? Okay, he is working in software, software development, software audit, uh, software support, and all those things. And they might have a specific uh, floor access given. You can't just walk into any department, any floor, and roam around. Even restrictions of a given human is restricted in quite a good number of organization. So if you want to go to a different floor, you might need to, uh, you know, grant those access on your card so that whenever you swipe that card, you might gain an access to that floor, to that department. Again, this is how we normally grant access and revoke access continuously through ID and IM management. These, uh, you know, the cyber uh, part of cyber security work domain is not categorized specifically as an ID IM access uh, executive or something like that, but these are normally referred as a cyber security analyst or cyber security executives. So we need to understand all such job rules where there's a cyber security executives, you might be trying to be one of such ID IM, you know, executives which do maintain the software, update the software, which might work on the overall administration of the software. So what the administration do if a new employee joins, 
he might give an access to the parking, he might be given access to a building, uh, then the lifts, then the specific floors. In good number of organizations, whenever you try to access a particular lift, you might have to use your access card. And that's how the restrictions are being imposed. And that lift basically start at the ground floor and go to a separate floor or a specific floors only. It might not open at all the floors. And this is how even physical movement during the, uh, during the office hours or within the office is normally restricted by ID and IM solutions. The major factor that expected to be driving the IAM market are growing emphasis on compliance management. So this is what we are calling about the compliance. So that all the entities are compartmentalized, are separated from each other, categorized already, and then we give the accesses, be it an employee category, be it a hardware or software category, be it some sort of a, you know, um, category like a storeroom and so on and so forth. So a software developer or a software manager or a CTO don't need to have an access to a closet where we have all these, uh, you know, toiletries and supplies. So this way we might have a restriction on those as well. So the major factors that are expected to be driving identity access management markets or solutions are growing in emphasis on compliance management and increasing trend of mobility have driven the demand of IM solution in various sectors. The employee can use their devices like the access card from different location these days. Moreover, bring your own device. This is a kind of addition in the last few years where I have a laptop which can be used at, a, at an employee space. So this way we are reducing the asset investment by employee and you are using your personal laptop for office work. So you know the laptop, you are you know, uh, familiarized with the layout, keyboard, the way it works and blah, blah, blah thing. An employee might pay you an additional rent. So that's a kind of addition to your in income when he talks about bring your own device or you might be using your cell phone for such purpose. That's why we have really great cell phones today. The processing power, the you know net accessibility and so on and so forth. So that's why bring your own device is a today's modern world. Because of this COVID corona and the remote working, there are great number of laptop thefts happened within North America and Canada. Because every time it's not advisable or it's not companies, uh, you know, what you can say forte to recover these laptop given to the employees. So what they do, they write it off or they, you know, report stolen to the police department as well as insurance entities. But now there's a trend rather than procuring this laptop in bulk by an organizations, they say you purchase your laptop, we might loan you some money in terms of interest free loan. But yes, that's your laptop and loan recovery is easy. But uh, recovery of a laptop might be difficult because not everybody could understand the laptop efficiency, laptop damages and so on. So, forth. so that's why nowadays bring your own device is a new modern advancement. This specifically targets to IDM, ID, uh, identity and access management system, wherever, whatever laptop you are using. If you are using for a company purpose, you might need to set up a VPN or virtual private network where you are attached to via internet and your communication is encrypted. You are working in an island. We are going to learn about this virtual private network in, I think, a couple of sessions. But right now, let's start to understand how identity and access management works. So Ravindra, be it in a St. Louis, be it in India, can still do his work as if he is working from his office. Yes, there are, of, of course, some deficiency due to the network problem, due to delays in these communications and all. But overall, it's still doable. And this build, bring your own device is a really modern and a um, great approach for saving asset costs by an organization. This approach is increasing the usage of mobile applications as well. So like an HR manager uh, might be on a holiday, might need to approve a couple of requests of leaves, couple of requests of, uh, you know, advance payment on salary and blah, blah things. So like that, he or she can do it from anywhere in the world. So they're working, but they are on leave and they might give just a couple of minutes a day or might be, you know, uh, a few hours at the most 
and get the ball rolling, get the company working in the today's modern world because we have mobile. You don't need laptop everywhere. Changing scenario and distributed IT environment have made organization susceptible to more cyber threats and thereby fueling the demand of better identity access management solution. So these solutions we are improving in a day by day, day today's modern world. ID and IM tools or software stores information about the objects on a network, be it a printer, be it access to a certain compartmentalized office, be it something like a server access. Make this information easy for administrator as well as user to find and use. So I might query the software saying, hey, I am software. Who am I? What type of access right uh, 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 has been given to me? Says, yes, yes, you, you are Ravindra. You're working as a software manager and you might have access to this floor where these software development, software tester, architect, designer sits and you might have access to this printer which is nearest to your city uh, nearest to your seat so that we use a common very efficient printer scanner all in one and all those things which is just situated near to you you might get access to one or maximum two printers and this way you might have a paper saving uh, or cost saving options within your organizations apply now there comes a kind of a base software or there come the most used software called Active Directory. Now directory being a list or a kind of, uh, you know, uh, a list of uh, users using list of objects and their relations in between their access or, uh, you know, um, restrictions thereof. So Active Directory is user structured data store as a basis for a logical hierarchical organizations directory information access information identity management information and that's how active directory is one of the proprietary software of microsoft we're going to learn that today any any questions so far any any confusion till on learning identity uh, authorization authentication management within a given company and the hierarchy and so on so forth any any questions as of now have you understood what is ID and I am? Yeah, yes. Yeah, good. Right? No problem. Thank you, madam. Now let's try to understand <laughs> what all we control. What all we normally tend to, you know, understand. Oh, this should be 12. Oh, pardon me. This should be not 6 point. It's a 12. 12 point agenda to remember. Okay. So let me come on. So as you can see on your, uh, you know, screen, we are talking about a 12 point agenda for any typical uh, identity access management solutions or the best practices. So here we are talking about clearly defined the IM vision. This talks about a clear relationship between uh, an entity with another entity so an employee and his access right granted for a given printer for a given network for a given storages right we have a deep, uh, you know uh, a kind of complete hierarchical cloud access levels you might be read something you might be uh, you know access something but you don't have a write permission or update permission like your paisley you might be able to read print and everything but you can't update that the update sites are only with the accounts department. So like that, we need to define a clear policy in terms of how the, uh, you know, relationship between these entities called individuals and the respective access rights. And then we have de to develop these strategies to understand this hierarchy and access given for these particular entity, be it a printer, database, even, uh, you know, employees own web page, and so on. So we developed a strong foundation for granting the access rights for granting these, uh, you know, um, uh, permissions and uh, uh, permutations for accessing by these, uh, you know, employees and the relevant entities, be it a particular office floor, be it a printer, be it any and everything. And then we go on implementing these stage wise in terms of 
first let uh, you know set up the access right of executive level or the top bosses as per the organization standards and then we might aware all these stakeholders all the parties who are basically gaining these access basically getting this access so that they can do their day to day office works you have to make them aware we make them understand so whenever you come you might log into your laptop it might look like a simple login but when it comes to understanding these things you are gaining an access of number of system and which is crucial for an organization so we need to understand he or she shouldn't get any access which is he or she shouldn't be he or she shouldn't update anything which he or she shouldn't be doing and so on so forth so can consider identity as a primary security uh, security perimeter like a compound we normally see to access a particular physical building and this uh, you know example is really great in terms of understanding how we are gaining access to a particular system crossing its fence then enforce multi level access where we might have uh, all the executives accessing certain uh, you know conference room or they might not have the conference free on their floor so they might need to go to another floor and access that conference room or a organizational get together you might be planning on a ground floor big conference room and you might have to give access to everybody and that sir can be a, a strategy of an organization then implement password login sometimes you might have to enter uh, you know a pin like a four pin uh, four uh, digit pin or a six digit pin or so on so forth as per your organi organizations adopted uh, policies and procedures and then we have a conduct a regular access audit are we doing it right are we missing something and yes there could be some exceptions as well like an account executive might need to you know visit a software division where he might explain a new hr policy a new hr increment uh, on new hr uh, you know saving scheme to these employees saying if you save 10 dollars a month you might get an income tax benefit or you, you might get uh, you know lesser taxes and so on so forth so like this we need to make sure all these privileges are secure enough are according to the hierarchy or according to the strategies we build in for identity and access management solutions then we have enforce a strong password policy also so that nobody can use others password and grant the access to the you know entities which he or she should be and then we have something called zero trust policies what do you mean by zero trust policy we normally don't trust anyone so we start with the least possible access rights given to a particular individual so if ravindra joins a, a company as a new employee he might get access to a very limited scenario within the first week in the second week he might get some better access in terms of you know uh, a printer in terms of uh, you know moving to a different uh, floor or get a better parking and so on so forth. So we're going to learn about zero trust policy in detail after a couple of sessions, but right now just understand the way these cybersecurity policies have been defined, designed, are worked on a principle called zero trust policy. So you are not trusting anybody as such, or you start with a zero trust. It doesn't mean that you don't trust anybody within an organization. It means that you normally just don't, uh, you know, grant any and every access to everybody. But it's a restricted mode. If you need, you might apply or you might request to somebody. There should be a portal or there should be a way where you might get, uh, you know, request access for a printer which is near to you. If it's not working correctly, you might request access of another printer which is kind of few steps ahead. And like that, we might need this access and we might request it for a particular days. So as soon as those particular number of days are over, the access is revoked. In such scenario, the employee might, might want to pre-process his access request, might be getting approved from his boss and all those things as well. So normally, this type of policy of the least access granted is called zero trust policy. 
it doesn't mean you don't trust anybody but it's the way the name given or this is how we refer to such policies in a day-to-day -day corporate <coughs> communications and then establish single sign-on so as we have understood there could be number of entities be it office access be it a laptop access be it a printer access and if every time we're going to uh, request his or her either finger iris scanner or access card is going to create lots of inconvenience and unnecessary time consumption so we use something called single sign-on so what is a single sign-on you put your card to your office door and you have all the necessary access granted to you if you single sign on on your laptop hey i'm ravindra this is my password put your finger and you know otp and all those things and you get access to each and everything to make sure you have a necessary authorization and authentication required or already approved for you approved for your level of work hierarchy within organization and this is how we are starting on something called single sign on and this is a kind of a uh, historical you know um, uh, phrase called single sign on and uh, sometimes you might have single sign on but in uh, current uh, you know what you can say uh, uh, current modern world uh, the single sign on is basically not advised but it might come again within couple of years this kind of history keeps repeating sometimes some organizations work on a single sign on but many organizations they are normally um staying away from it because of might be remote working challenges and so on and so forth so if you want to access something on a cloud you might have to log in again you might use the same credential but you might have to log in as i'm clearing those credential with a particular service or particular entities and this is how this 12 point agenda normally for any im and IA, uh, iam tools installation and configuration which is used by many cyber security executives so if somebody asks you how you want to make sure we are using the best iam practices or how do you grant access uh, you know to a given new executive so you might tell them about this 12 point agenda and this is how we build this access for a given employee for a given executive for a given guest as well so this 12 point agenda is really important enough for us to understand if you're going to work for identity access management tools does that make sense anybody have any confusion a a any uh, item which i can help you more uh, yes um i have a concern Good. here you know you say the one of the 12 points agenda you have here uh -huh. is enforce a strong password policy right sir then you still have the implement passwordless login so uh -huh. i'm a, bit, a little bit confused about the two if we need to enforce a, a strong password policy why do we still have to implement passwordless login okay you're talking about the comparison between single sign-on and a strong no password. between the uh, strong password policy and passwordless login Password uh, less, less. That's the last one. The last one. The number twelve on the right side. Uh, implement implement passwordless login. Okay, okay, okay. Huh. Now yes. again, all these agendas are basically devised on the best practices. At some point, you might go with passwordless login, where you have your fingerprint scan or iris scan, or you know whatever they've implemented in because now we have even dna uh, access and blah blah thing in couple of uh, you know uh, places so either you can use that or you can enforce a strong password policy like a okay. pin number or a password as in alphanumeric password minimum eight letter length uh, one should be capital one should be special character and so on and so forth or you can use something like biometric okay okay that, which means it depends on the environment and depends on the the policies the yes, management so, very right so the policies have been accepted by given organizations for a specific function let me give you an example an accountant working in an enterprise rent a car at st louis office he enters the building with his access card 
Yes. But ladies try to enter the department where they kept their, you know, uh, accounts uh, servers and all. He might need to use his fingerprint sensor. Okay. Can't he go with the card? Yes, but the company felt they might need to have a certain additional security. So rather than any card, or if somebody takes somebody's card and get access to that, uh, you know, the restricted area might okay. uh, it shouldn't work. So they say, okay, put, please put your finger, and then only you can access those things. And the door opens so much that only a single person can enter. You couldn't have two persons walking in at the same time as well. So these type of restrictions are normally implemented for you know. Uh, again, depending upon the criticalness, depending upon the secure way of access, the company policy have implemented. Okay, thank you. Uh, so there much. could be just single card you can access everywhere within your, uh, you know, um, within your building, and so on and so forth. Again, it depends on the way you uh, apply the strategies. Does that answer your question, sir? Oh, very well. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Now let's uh, start with the best tool available in terms of identity and access management. It's from a, a company called Microsoft, where we use Windows, uh, Windows servers, uh, Windows 11, Windows 10, Windows 12. Uh, it's coming for the last two years, I believe, right? So uh, yes, these things do happen. But yes, this is the most used tool across the globe. Whenever you install Windows, they normally install something called Active Directory. You can have a look at your you know laptop desktop and see a service running called active directory service this active directory service is basically for giving access to you on your laptop which start with a username password or your fingerprint sensor where it is used for your you know login or you can have a pin as well now depending upon your setup on your laptop microsoft uses something called active directory services to let you access the resources on your laptop. You might have an administrative privilege, but your kid might be using some user access privileges on your laptop so that he can browse the internet, he can have a look at his, you know, school work or, uh, you know, school programs, blah, blah, thing by accessing internet. And this way, we have a restricted access policy, even for an individualized laptop. Be it an Android phone. Normally, Android phone is a personal thing. So we don't have multi-user support, but be it a laptop, you have to support it for multi-user purpose as well. So you, you can use the laptop, desktop, or your kids, your wife, your better half, even your guests coming to your house might need to use internet. So you might have a separate login for them as well. And all these login or credential management within Windows, normally done by Active Directory. And as we know, Microsoft have a cloud services or a cloud vendor called Azure. Now this A-Z-U-R-E is basically a kind of solution given by Microsoft as an organization to its customer for cloud services. And that's what Microsoft Azure, we have Microsoft Azure Active Directory services, uh, whenever you use Microsoft Cloud uh, as an entity, which you have, uh, you have to use for your day-to-day -day work as well. So with the Active Directory, it's easy to create and delete user account or add another resource on the network. For example, IT administrators only have to create an account of a new employee one time rather than having it to set up an account on every computer and a printer. So within an organization, if you are joining a Microsoft, your account might be created in your office, but it has to be synchronized with all other servers. So if you join Microsoft uh, Seattle office, that's their corporate headquarter, your account is created in Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Outlook email and so on and so forth. Because Microsoft have so many software they use, as we talked about the software application. Or if you join Microsoft, uh, you know, New York office, there also your, uh, you know, accounts get created as an employee and you can use the same credential if you go to Seattle, if you go to India, if you go to China and everywhere else as well. So employee which joins an organization, get his or her credentials applied as per the given hierarchy within this ID and IM access software. Here we are talking about one of the best and one of the most evolved IDM, uh, ID and IAM access tool called Microsoft Active Directory or Microsoft Azure Active Directory as it refers right now. 
this uses services like a resetting password normally as we see in strong password there's an additional additional thing um, uh, uh, within that service called continuously changing password so some organizations might have your password change almost every month if not at least once in a three months and that's a standard best practices applied all over the globe so whenever you join an organization your employee password get resetted if once in a three months so after your uh, i think 90 day period or 93 days period your password might get expired and you might need to create a new password it is also fast and simple process uh, because of activity when an employee forgets their password administrator can go into archive um, active directory and reset it for them they don't have the password whatever you type they couldn't see it but still they can reset your password so whenever you log in you might need to give him the new password you can't use the old password and the activity will tell you yes hey Ravindra this password has been expired like yesterday or activity might come and tell you hey Ravindra your password is getting expired uh, on Tuesday so you might need to update it today so proactively password updation so that that password will be valid for the next 90 93 day as per the organization policy the new password is then automatically updated across the entire network so if I'm working for Microsoft at New York, and if I decide to go to Seattle for some meeting or some say, seminar or a training, my password is still usable even in that office because all these authorization authentication record are get synchronized on a global level. Even the new password is automatically updated across the entire network on every resource that user has access to. The administrator can also set permission or update permission for a specific group of people like Ravindra with 12 others is going to Seattle office for some training. So the active directory might create an exceptions within their rule saying okay Ravindra and 12 others are visiting Seattle office on 8th May. So they have to have those access to this conference room, uh, you know, to these uh, even laboratories, to this floor and so on. So even Microsoft have some garden, but even that garden access uh, have been restricted to few employees. And this is also a way of basically making sure of the zero trust policy or least, least grant access policy. And yes, these are all getting synchronized automatically by the rules set up by these administrators. The administrator can also set the permission for a specific group. Activity lets you create security groups like cyber security groups, cyber security ex executives. They might have access to certain systems like the network penetration tool, like the, you know, uh, uh, auditing tools and so on. So again, depending upon your group you're working for, you might get access to these softwares. Setting up these users can access which network assets. Now all these applications, softwares are network assets. They are installed on network and accessed via network or a cloud, such as shared file application. So here we are talking about the storages, the application we might use, uh, even within that application, we might have certain rights, might not have all the rights given to you. You can also organize your company's network hierarchy in terms of if you are getting promoted, from let's say a cybersecurity analyst to cybersecurity manager. Now you might have access to another couple of additional things in terms of you might have access to the way executives are working with you and their work performance. For example, it's through Active Directory that you determine which computers and printers belong on which network, belongs on which floor, might be given access to. In case if there is a guest and he want to he or she wants to print some certain things, you might have to know where he or she is working, which is the nearest possible printer or which is the nearest possible instrument that you can give access to so that he or she can get it printed. But he or she might not be, uh, you know, able to scan something and so on. So again, depending upon your organizational policies and processes, you set up these active directory or an identity access management tool within a Microsoft domain, within a Microsoft software. Does that make sense? Anybody have any confusion? Mm -hmm. 
Are we good? Could you hear me? It's okay. It's clear. Sure. Thank you, Andy. Thanks a lot. Uh, Jay, sir, we, we, I couldn't hear you at least. Uh, can anybody hear Jay, sir's uh, audio? The mic not be working, sir. No problem. No problem. You can even uh, type also. Okay, there's an option called chat as well. Let me move forward. So here, let's try to understand a certain good thing or advancement within the Microsoft Azure directory because we said it's an uh, really what you can say enhanced evolved software. A core of Microsoft offering in the IAM field is Azure Active Directory or it called Azure AD. This Azure is a pronunciation which I have adopted to. There might be a different pronunciation within the company where you start working. So we need to use those pronunci pronunciations rather than the way I pronounce. Uh, so a core Microsoft offering in uh, identity access management field is Azure Directory Services or called Azure AD most of the time or just AD as well, which works in the cloud and can be extended to the physical devices as well. So your, uh, you know, Android phone or Apple phone might be added in Azure Directory if you're taking your phone to the office and they might be able to uh, apply these Azure Directory privileges to your phone as well. Or even you can use your phone as an access card. There are a uh, few companies who are started working that way. So rather than printing, uh, yes, yes, sir, we can understand your mic is not working. So as far as access given, you can use your phone as well because your phone have a, uh, you know, it's a small computer. Or uh, if you have really good phone, it's a, a really powerful computer also. So this computer can basically sense uh, they, they can use something like near frequency communication or wherever you walked in your phone um, can intimate the access uh, you know computer saying hey i'm here so could you please open the door so the door will be open automatically if you are within one meter distance or the way system have been configured and all it also designated to the deployed ac access across the entire data center if necessary according to microsoft more than uh, 20, um, uh, 200,000 customers are using Active Directory to pro protect around um, 400 plus million users. So yes, this is the most used software. And even if you're using Windows, if you have a Microsoft phone, the Active Directory is already installed on your computer. Whenever you use Microsoft, uh, you know, email services like Outlook or even Microsoft Office, they are enabled with Active Directory. The Office 365 U uses Active Directory services internally without you knowing them. But yes, there are some administrators which you normally call as Office Administrator normally grant and revoke the licenses as per the necessary mean. So if you purchased uh, Office uh, 365 U subscription for a month, you'll get an access for a month only. Or they might give you some bonus access for a couple of days, but that's their purpose and so on so, so even active directory is a kind of works in a background for all the softwares and services microsoft works on the platform processes an average 30 billion authentications every day and this is a um, um, older uh, versions uh, i think this was a uh, you know i got from um, microsoft ad services in 2021 most probably so today it might be more customer today it might be 35 million authentications every day, making it one of the largest in the world. Microsoft have created many templates of a popular user cases for tools so that most of the organizations can drag and drop to, to an IAM configuration into place. These are called groups and will, uh, so we have a group, so group called executive, groups called manager, uh, groups called uh, accounts, and so on and so forth. So we have multiple groups within our, our Active Directory, which normally come as a part of a developed solution or evolved solution. And we might apply these groups to an employee for a new organization. This is they're reducing the work of the administrator or a cybersecurity executives. Microsoft have created many templates and these are what he called good group templates within Active Directory, which are really a popular one for the tool that most organizations can just drag and drop to an existing IAM configuration into place and be ready to go with it only with minor customization. The access right which I talked about for a new employee 
for a given week and then elevate his axis uh, for some additional scenario is a normal Microsoft activity group user policy I'm discussing about. Azure activity automates the workflow can provide authentication user access to the data and the applications as they need to be used. They use from anywhere in the world, regardless of what the device they are using. Like for Microsoft Office, if you purchase a Microsoft Office, you can use that uh, you know, license on your laptop, desktop, palm top, mobile phone, smartphone, and blah, blah things. You just have to purchase one license or you can purchase group licensing also. Group licensing, like at the one time, you might purchase six license together. The licensing cost of one license can be uh, let's say uh, $21 per month for a six user it can be $35 a month because they want to sell more license they normally give a hefty discount if you increase the number of licenses and that's how for a given family for a, a six user or so like for a husband and wife this is how they have a specific discounted rate that's how the whole family can use Microsoft Office at the rate of $35 per month. Again, these rates might be older. For all these licensing rates, you might visit Microsoft.com and check out latest Office 365 volume licensing or a group license. It also supports a single sign-on. So you might clamp the number of entities that uh, are available with the sign-on and you can apply it group-wise also. So for a given family, you might add administrative privileges for a printer within a house. So whenever somebody is accessing uh, via those credentials, automatically get the access of a printer and so on and so forth. So that's how a single sign-on can be enabled within Microsoft Active Directory or a cloud storage you have purchased. Let's say you have purchased a five, gig, um, five gigabyte of cloud storage Amazon server so that you can uh, archive all your photos taken, all your you know softwares or a, um, let's say Microsoft Office file backed up on a real time. So if you type a document, the document is getting backed up, document is getting stored even on a cloud and your local device simultaneously as well. And you don't have to enable anything or you don't have to uh, sign on any different credentials with the cloud. It's just the single sign on works uh, here. The conditional access or just in time access as the basis of zero trust networking. Now, this is how the Microsoft Active Directory we are using day in, day out without we knowing it. So, whatever you do in terms of single sign on on your laptop, desktop, and getting access to the printer and all is a part of Active Directory software already implemented in every Microsoft Windows any Microsoft, uh, you know, applications like MS Office and all those things as well. Now, let me play you a small video where we'll try to understand how this overall software looks. So, as we've seen, Active Directory is kind of underlined, uh, you know, uh, um, authentication services we use day to day whenever you log into any Microsoft software, be it a Windows, be it something. And so, if you're using something like Linux or Apple, then they have their own Active Directory services or they have their, their own IAM type of software installed on your devices and you have to use them. This, these are the proprietary software, right? And like that, we're going to learn another 8, 10 softwares to understand what are the best use softwares or what are the software we do use, like the Active Directory, which we don't know about. But yes, as a cybersecurity ex executive, we have to understand Active Directory. This is the mostly used software used by billions altogether. Anu sir, do you want to add anything to these? No sir, you have addressed pretty much all the points on this. Hello, Hello I couldn't hear you sir. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, yes, please go ahead sir. Yeah, I was saying that you have it, anyways pretty, uh, covered pretty much all the points in Active Directory. Okay, so um, uh, this is all about Active Directory we are talking about. Let's have a look at another software today. Oh, come on. Yeah, IBM. This is another best used software across the globe because uh, previously IBM was the uh, main uh, hardware vendor or infrastructure vendor. 
So all these services in good old days are normally installed on IBM servers or IBM systems. Even window, uh, before Windows, we used to use uh, you know operating system like uh, IBM OS2 or IBM Wax VMS. These are uh, these I'm talking about good old years like 1940s, 60s, 70s, and so on and so forth. So yes, IBM, uh, IM, and they call it CIM, and we're going to understand how you know uh, uh, they have created this. How it's another market leader uh, after uh, Microsoft Active Directory Services. So identity and access management is essential for securing hybrid multi-cloud enterprises. Smart and modern identity solution delivers a frictionless and secure experience for every users, every asset and even every data storage data interaction providing a foundation for a zero trust strategies so zero trust strategy means you give the access to the bare minimum and revoke it as early as you can without hampering the work and that's how the zero trust policy is formulated by every organizations as per their policies rules they've implemented for their given organization Grant access rights, provide single sign-on from any device, like we say in Active Directory. It's not very much different from Active Directory. Only thing, there could be some menu items, name different. There could be some, you know, way we set up these things are different from the Active Directory. So Active Directory might have a blue screen. Uh, these might have a cream color screen or an olive screen, depending upon their, you know, interface they've de developed for such users and administrators. The user might not have to you know, do anything for IDM and IX, uh, uh, you know, usages like we install Windows. Everything does happen within the Windows. Similarly, for I IBM and IM, if you connected with IBM services, IBM products, they use these IBM, IAM and I CIM softwares internally. So grant access right, provide single sign on from any device, enhance security access with multi-factor authentication. What do you mean by multi-factor authentication? If Ravinder logs into his home network, he have a printer, uh, he have a wireless storage device. Yes, of course, it was from IBM. So I have a two gig uh, wireless, uh, you know, uh, what you can say, um, web storage, uh, sorry, uh, internet storage or a local uh, storage, which can be accessed via network. And that's how I use that storage whenever I goes into uh, come into house. And I might have set up some backup directories, like whenever I enter house, all my new documents, new photos might get synced up on that cloud and it's removed from my device. So my device is light and sturdy. Of course, you need to configure the, this way. There are really good uh, storage devices as of now. Many of you might have you know, purchased those things. You might have one in the house so that whenever you enter your, uh, within your house, your smartphone, your laptop, what all services you already configured can back up that data uh, to that uh, device. By the time you get fresh enough, the data is backed up and device is ready for you. It happens in background without you even you knowing it. This is all possible because of all these IDM and IM uh, tools we use on day to day basis. Of course, they use single sign on and you know, all the other zero trust policy within themselves. Customer identity and access management. This is the name of ID and I management tool in IBM. So CIM is a solution which we use to basically uh, get access to all IBM products, services, or they have these tool inbuilt into it like that Microsoft Active Directory or Azure Active Directory. So consumer identity and access management solutions design engaging modern and secure digital experiences for consumer identity and access management. IBM have one of the greatest solution in terms of digitization. So you're converting your local offices uh, to a digital presence. You are removing paper. Uh, you are moving from paperless office to a digital office. You might use IBM solutions and the CIM comes with it. CIAM comes with it. You use it automatically. Now here also I have a really good video from IBM itself. So let's hear from the house mouth how they do. So we are learning ID and IM access management. The best part is we have to understand what it does. 
and there could be n different softwares we might use whenever you join on a job so right now we are just trying to understand the best practices uh, and these are the 12 best uh, agenda which we have to understand in terms of what all we do with id identity access management or access management softwares and how we basically utilize them the actual menu might be different or the uh, you know software we learn now might get updated uh, while you start your job so there could be some ship, uh, you know shipping of this menu to there the screen might be turned from uh, you know uh, blue to light blue and so on so forth so there could be many changes as far as the ui goes but once you under, understand the basics and why we are doing it it's much simpler which must better to understand in a easier way does that make sense to you any confusion uh, any difficulties i can address right now anu sir do you want to add anything sir no sir so yes uh, let me give an exception scenario there's a account executive join who is also a cyber safety executive now here we are basically we have to add these uh, you know new employee to the cyber safety group as well as account de department because he going to uh, do uh, you know both type of roles in that scenario he might be an exceptional role to the normal employees so there could be added to the two groups rather than one group so there could be this group policy which are connected together and i'll have two group policies added to its credential and that's how simply it works and it's just click 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 rather than any programming but in some software if you join a software company which are developing id and im tools there will be developers also so you might work with them depending upon you know far and few instances but normally please um, believe me when i'm saying you will use microsoft active directory as a basics in terms of all id and im access management tools you use and one or two more at the most that's how you work even as a cyber security executive and that's what we need to understand in terms of how we're going to cope up with these tools and we normally learn whenever we start working on a job so please don't uh, what you can say uh, um don't feel like you know we are ignoring something as of now but this is a part of our learning and as far as cyber security goes we learn all the new tools and technology almost every week every month and that's how we need to keep ourselves abreast that's so we need to keep ourselves modernized and that's the best challenge or best thing we have with cyber security executives you get to learn new tools every now and then and you modernize you uplift yourself to a new level and that's the best part does that make sense to you am i audible hello can you hear me hello yes you can hear me yes you can hear you okay okay no problem now let's go over uh, now here we are entering into the technicality of cyber security and yes uh, we might uh, learn we might practice i'll give you some three four videos which you can go through it and if you have any question please do ask but yes please do practice this is how we going to learn because every tool is modern uh, every tool uh, might get updated whenever you actually start working so rather than installing a tool uh, as a you know um, participant i will do suggest you there will be a tools which we will have a look at it we might look at it before interview just to explain the look and feel and look and feel means you can just explain to the interviewer yeah i think it's a green background the tool or there's a you know vertical menu on the left side uh, and there's a menu on the top and we have different group user policies it normally starts with create user type of you know link at the top and so on so forth these type of explanations are also admissible in cyber security because even interviewer knows you might have worked with the older software and to all cyber security expert you normally get one or two weeks workshop whenever you join an organization just to make sure whatever software and versions of that software they are using currently and that's how the overall what you can say induction of a cyber security executive when organization does happen because 
there are frequent updates to a given versions, frequent changes to the UI as well. So in IBM, you might uh, have a look at older version, which might have a light blue background. But if you start working, it might have a dark background because these things do happen as far as you might call it customization. You might call it the organizational implementation of a tool or the visualization updates that the organization might have implemented for you. And this is how the overall cybersecurity area is continuously changing in terms of its uh, way the things have been implemented and used on a given, uh, with a given company. And they want a secure way of that. So they do it purposely to make sure their tool is not very common and very accessed by uh, every other person in the North America or Canada. And this is the way the different is secure in most of the scenario. So we need to understand this also. But the challenge it adds to our overall, you know, job um, uh, acquisition process is basically you can't explain most of the UI. So how do you do it? You handle it diplomatically. How do you handle it diplomatically? You might say, yeah, I might have seen the older version, sir, or madam, whatever, you know, in a, the interviewer is. And you might try to tell them, but uh, whatever version I have, you know, seen have these, these kind of menu or menu items, like first for creating new user, adding group policies, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, attaching a schedule to that uh, user uh, creation, access, revoke process, and so on, so forth. Even this much is a kind of justified answer for addressing any new software. And yes, you have to build in your diplomatic answer. So please work on that as well. Okay, let me show you some, um, let me uh, share some videos which we have seen today, as well as some more, please go through them and they will guide you in terms of how Microsoft Active Directory looks like, how these users are created, uh, and you know how these new users are basically given access to certain group policies and so on and so forth. That's all to understand in terms of IDM and IIM tools, and we're going to learn around six, seven different tools which are really favorite among North American and Canadian vendors. The next tool be, uh, we have gone through these two today. Then the next tool is CloudNox. It's called CloudNox Permission Management. Okay. Then we have CyberArk. CyberArk is one of the most oldest and, you know, really great um, tool used by quite a few good number of software companies within North America. Forgerock. Forgerock is a new modern tool, which is really, you know, uh, came in terms of um, a modern way of doing uh, Internet of Things based uh, new embedded system. Believe me, even Forge Rock is installed on quite a good number of these new washing machines which run automatically on their own. So if you're working in any industry where you have these large washing machines um, which are installed in, let's say, a data center or a hotel, you might use Forge Rock as a basic configuration tool for a uh, new modern uh, instrument we use on day in day out basis. Okay, uh, let, let's stop here today. I think I've already overstepped by around 12, 13 minutes. Please pardon me for that. Please go through this video, which I'm going to share with you. Build your notes. Please uh, build your answers so that whenever we practice our interviews, you could uh, relay these answers uh, ahead of time fully confidently. Okay. If you have any question, please feel free to contact me via WhatsApp and we'll basically uh, move forward on the new tools and technology in terms of learning the best tools uh, uh, available in the market or used by the market in terms of all these cybersecurity area. Okay. Does anybody have any question for me as of now? Okay, do anybody have any suggestion in terms of how I can, uh, how me and Anuj sir can improve the uh, overall delivery of this knowledge? Anybody have any suggestions? How we can do it better? Or you can basically uh, share your feedback uh, in a WhatsApp as well. How do you find this session is, how do you find our, you know, uh, teaching policy and processes, how we can improve them also so that it basically addresses all your concern confusions. I know it's a bit technical. We are going into the technicality now, but yes, we need to learn few technicalities to capture the job, to capture the trust of the interviewer. So it's a part of the whole, you know, understanding and learning process. Are you with me, sir, madam?
Could you understand what I'm trying to say here? Uh, yeah, uh, I have a suggestion. Go ahead, sir, please. Yes, I'm, I'm thinking that we should maybe dedicate like 30 minutes or an hour for us to practicalize this um, as your active directory or how to set up I, I am, you know, identity and access management in any platform. We have, yes, maybe we can do it together in the class so that who is not able to do it can learn from another person or can learn from the class. It's just Joseph. a suggestion. That's my, my own no, suggestion. No, yeah, you're very, very right on that. Means you should have hands-on yeah. practices. But as I told you, sir, yes. there are challenges. Yes. Mm -hmm. You might join a company where you might not see Active Directory or Azure Directory or IBM CIM tool. You might see Forge Rock mm -hmm. as we, you know. So in that scenario, you might be, you know, no Forge Rock. So what to practice is a challenge here. And believe me, when you start working, you'll get to know the tools itself get changed in a couple of months. So you might start working with, let's say, Veritas as an organization. Veritas is one of the most prominent, uh, you know, a network building instrument within North America. They have really good ma market capture. Veritas was really using, uh, I think, uh, Cyber Arc first. Now they have moved to Forge Rock. And they did it in last uh, fourth month because we have one resource working there. Now we had an extra session with that resource saying, okay, uh, let's go to the Forge Rock, whatever the latest version. And believe me, Forge Rock is open source, so you can download and use. And I'll give you a link and everything. Please don't worry on that part. But let's go a bit slower. Let's first try to understand whatever we need to understand about a tool or what we need from that tool. Does that make sense, sir? Okay, yes, it makes sense. Yes. So like what we're trying to, let's say, if you're trying to make a cake, right? So do we have the ingredients? Do we want to buy the ingredients? And so on and so forth. So we first basically getting warmed up in preparation of these tools, sir. And that's what stage, we are just started learning these things. Let me, uh, let me make sure we will have uh, you know hands-on practice for at least two tools out of these eight. Let me make sure of that. I'll guide you on the link. Okay. You download on your laptop, desktop, and these are basically free tools, open system tools. So you don't have to pay anything as well. Okay. And this way okay. we will okay. learn these tools uh, with the hands-on, and you'll get to know how to create a user. What do you mean by group policy? What do you mean by group? Yes. Sir? No, we will do that, sir. Please don't worry. Okay. okay? All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And if you have any suggestions, any comment, remark, you can record an audio file or, you know, message me on a WhatsApp as well. Me to Anu, sir, and we'll be happy to, you know, help you out. See, we are all grown up people. We are all matured professionals. Okay. So rather than me spooning feeding you, you can guide us what's the best way as well. Right. And we can work out together. We'll form a strategy to get, gain maximum knowledge of these tools one by one. Okay. Let me stop here today. Let's meet uh, again on uh, Friday itself and we'll, you know, learn more on identity and access management tools hereafter. Okay. And we have great uh, Anusar also with us who is actually working on the real version of the tool. So he'll also demonstrate how he does his job in a day to day basis. So that's uh, we are lucky in that, uh, you know, scenario. Okay. So please don't feel left out. Please do comment, suggest. And even you can praise us. <laughs> I might not say this, but yes, uh, that's also can be done uh, via WhatsApp as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Have a good night and great weekend. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.